Hey folks, doing a new little series. Uh, let's call it Hunting 101. Uh, so first of all, let's look at our tools here. Yeah, let me get it in there. So I got a uh, Husqvarna 545 uh, professional chainsaw with the auto tune. You don't need something that drastic. You can get a lighter chainsaw to work just fine as long as it's gas powered because you're going to need it to use it remotely. Some bar oil, uh, some heavy duty weed whacker line. This is the uh, 0.9 and that goes into my uh, Echo with a speed feed head on it. The speed feed head is the only way to go. I mean, it takes like seconds to change your trimmer line. The, SM, the SRM 225 Echo. Once again, these are not cheap tools. Uh, so whatever you got, use it. And then some mixed gas. On the back of, uh, you can use a quad, a side-by-side, -side, whatever. I use the uh, Cup Cadet commercial riding mower a lot because I have a pretty big piece of property. But let's talk about what I'm doing out here today. So uh, used to be, there used to be a fence line here and everything was grown out to about this far onto the hill. And you can see that more prevalently as we get down. But I'm clearing off this fence line and I'll show you why in just a moment. Um, what would happen is for the past couple years, I'd be walking out to my hunting spot, which is well beyond my barn out here. And um, I'd walk out and the deer would see me before I'd see them. And that is it, it ruined the hunting day. So before I even made it to the woods, it would ruin it. And I knew that was a problem. Um, not to mention having all of this brush and everything was starting to take over my hillside, my yard. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm clearing it off from the beginning of the property all the way down to my barn, which is down there. And you see, I got a, a lot in the way, but deer, small game, and anything that you really hunt, they take the path of least resistance. Um, they don't want to walk through a bunch of briar patches. Uh, they don't want to have a bunch of trip hazards and they want a clear area that they can walk through. Okay. Um, this is fairly clear for deer and small game, which is basically what I go for rabbits, deer, those types of things. Okay. Um, it opens up area for me to be able to trap, which is important because I do more trapping than I do hunting. And it allows me to see everything before they can see me, all right? So now in the future, what I'm doing is I'm walking down below on the bottom side of the property, now through where they can't see me because they come through here in the morning. And I'll be able to come in and around. And since this is opened up, I'll be able to see out the window of my house, I'll be able to see if there's anything out there before I even come out. But most importantly, what I'm doing is giving them entry and exit points. Um, deer especially don't like to feel trapped in their environment they don't like to feel like they only have one way to go a lot of people think the deer will come in the way they came out it's not true um, typically they have multiple exit points multiple entry points now deer are a creature of habit so they will many times have that same entry point they go and that same exit point they go but they really like to have if you want them comfortable on your property or in your hunting area, they want to have multiple um, entry and egress points. So last night after I had been clearing a lot of this stuff, I cleared some trails out in the woods here, I'll show you. Um, I was just standing by my garden and right over here where I widened up the trail into the woods, a mother deer and her fawn were just standing there staring at me. Um, I've had quite a few turkey out here as well. I'm hanging out with my chickens, wild turkeys, and they're starting to roost right here where I've opened the trails up. So we have about 14 large turkeys roosting, and I've seen up to 12 babies, uh, chicks, um, over the past couple months. So we're on the verge of having almost 30 turkey hanging out right here, and I do hunt turkey. Um, what I did first was I opened up this path pretty wide. So I want to be able to get trucks in here and stuff like that. But also, it's keeping this path open so there's a wide berth. So not just one deer is going to walk down this path. The herd will walk down this path. On my property, we have four herds walk, that pass through. We're, we're on a pass-through property, and that means that the deer don't live here. They just simply pass through because there's a water source, there's trails, there's a field, grazing area. We have the perfect environment for deer hunting, basically. Okay? So with pass-through animals, I don't want the herd to get scattered. I want them to stay together. 
Um, in order to do that, you have to create an area for them to walk, okay? If you don't, they will scatter all over the place and one will see you and alert the other ones. But if they're in a group and you can see that whole group, then you have a better opportunity of getting something, okay? Because it's you can see if they see you. You can stand still and a lot of times they'll just keep on walking if you're standing still enough. So I open up this path here. It goes all the way around the property. And then up here, one of the biggest issues I was having with hunting this property, and I talked about this a few years ago when I was doing an archery video, um, the woods are thick here, really thick. Now what happened was back in the 80s, a tornado came through this property and leveled a lot of the really good trees and stuff. Um, so what happened is all this underbrush grew up and this all used to be pasture here. All this undergrowth grew up. Now we have a lot of cherries, uh, walnut, uh, no ash trees, obviously. All the ash in the area died years ago. Um, but there was no paths. So you had to trudge through everything. So you're making noise every step along the way. So I've opened up separate trails. You saw the one down below. You see my wide trail. And I opened up this trail that leads to that other one that wraps around the property, okay? Remember, multiple entry and multiple exit points, but most importantly, points that I can see from my different hunting locations on the property. Uh, the field is obviously an open area. A lot of times in the evening, they come from that area of the field, they walk down this edge, or they come in from the other side and they walk down through here, and they come right down through here, okay? Um, years ago, when I first started hunting this property before I owned it, um, down below, they'd cut straight down through. Well, that path that I just opened up on the right down here was where they used to cross through. They stopped using it because a couple trees had fallen down there and path of least resistance. There was resistance, so they stopped. Then over here, I remember when I first started dating my wife, this is her mother's and grandmother's property, this whole area was open with just a few little straggler trees and stuff, right? So that's what I'm doing again. I'm opening it up. I'm giving the deer back the habitat that they were used to. And I'm putting water sources out here. So just basically big rubber buckets that go in the ground and yeah, let the rain water kind of fill them up and overflow. Uh, you do want to check to clean them every once in a while simply because they can get stagnant and we don't want standing water all over the place. But through here, Although deer do like path of least resistance, they also like grazing area and they like places that they can hide and they can bed down. So I'm removing these small little locust trees and things like that, but I'm leaving some of the underbrush over here. So when they walk through, trust me, I can see them. Um, they feel like they're sheltered. They feel like they're hidden enough, like it's a safe passageway. Um, because through my property and other properties I hunt, um, you'll find these random ladders or wooden ladders and things like that I go up to the tree stands that I have positioned around so anywhere I'm going I'm going to create exit and entry points now I can see that that stands more for rifle hunting I don't do bow hunting from a stand I do it on the ground but there's the other thing what kind of hunting are you going to be doing are you going to be doing ground hunting or tree hunting and tree hunting you want to clear the canopy that's around you so it's not in your way. So you need to climb up in there weeks ahead of time, see all the things that are blocking your view and go around and prune all that stuff if you have permission to do so, if it's not on your own land. And make sure you have an area 360 degrees around your tree that you can see because like behind my stand is that trail that goes all around my property. So sometimes they're gonna walk down through there and, or come from this direction here come straight down this trail here okay but you'll notice that i'm not taking away from all the overgrowth i'm not op opening everything up um even the raspberry bushes and stuff i leave those i eat that stuff i don't know about you but um i'm just creating entry and exit points for them so they have multiple options because what we have here on this property is we have like seven or eight different herd of deer that pass through and they're very unique to one another and which means they all come in and exit at different points as well. So I'm giving them more options. Um, my camp is out here, right out at the end of this trail. And I like to be able to do my camping out here um, and not have a bunch of deer pass through that area, which is fine. 
So what I did was out, out in this area out here where my camp's at, just on the other side of it, I have a couple down pine trees and those are becoming permanent fixtures. The pines and a couple hardwoods that are down over there, I'm stacking them behind my camp so nothing can come in behind me. I wanna create resistance there, all right? So a lot of people don't know that when I hunt, a lot of times I'll go out in the woods and I'll stay there for a couple days. Um, I don't go back to the house unless I really need to. Um, I wanna stay right in this area right here. Um, but I haven't cleared, shut off the other trails because that leads to other hunting points. Now, will the deer walk through here? Sure they will, sure they will. But I know what direction they're gonna come in. They're coming from that way or that way. They'll never come in from behind me, they can't. Um, I'm closing it all off so they can't do that. Right now I've opened a trail simply so I can get a machine, small machine back in here so I can do the work that I need to do. And I have this down pine here that the deer are obviously not gonna walk through. I have a dead standing one there that's coming down and I have two dead standing ones over here that are gonna be coming down back in here. And that blocks off this whole area. And this becomes my new kind of hunting area. And it also becomes a blind for turkey hunting. Uh, so right in this area here, the turkey like to come through. They will maneuver themselves around the weeds and stuff, but they still like the path of least resistance. So I gave them small trails more for turkey and lower lying game, game that are closer to the ground. Okay, so that allows for all the multiple different types of hunting and it's all above their primary water source, which is right down over the hill in the valley here. It's a Bull Run Creek, it's a big creek. Um, and there's about, on my property alone, probably about 12 or 13 different natural springs and an underground river that all feeds that creek. So there's water in it all the time. Um, and that's something else I look for when I'm hunting or when I'm buying property or clearing property for hunting. And that is water that is always wet, that always has water, a water source that always has water. Uh, number two, can I clear paths of leaf resistance and create multiple, um, multiple entry and egress points for the animals to make them feel more comfortable with the land? Are there shaded embedding spots available? Is there the things that they eat? right? Those are the stuff that they eat. Um, and can I have areas of camp? Now over here is where I do all my classes and everything. But during hunting season, I would never do classes out here because I don't want to spoil my own hunting area. Uh, what's nice is I typically hunt early season. Um, I don't do a lot of late season hunting. I do mostly late season trapping. Um, so I don't really have a problem with that. This area back in here, I'm clearing through so we can have workstations for workshops for the classroom environments. But other than that, I leave most of it the way it is. I want, I just, I'm making the area good for me to be able to see through, good for me to be able to sneak up on the game without them sneaking up on me. Um, comfort for the animals, bedding areas, like these shaded bedding areas, low line areas. I clear the, some of the underbrush, bend a few trees over and make nice bedding spots for them. Uh, water area is gonna be installed. Uh, funny enough, a latrine in the back for me uh, for when I'm teaching classes, but also when I'm just out and about and I don't want to walk all the way back to the house, right? But these are things that a lot of hunters don't think of. New hunters, us experienced guys know that we're looking for trails and water, right? Trails, trees, and water. Um, so when we are looking for those things, we want to ensure that not only can the animals pass through easily, but we can pass through easily. And that doesn't just mean by foot. Um, I've gotten, I've taken some pretty big deer out of this area when I can see the damn things. And um, I had to get a tractor back in here or a small ATV back in here to be able to pull them out because I, I just couldn't drag them when my back was hurting really bad. Um, for those of us that use a sled a lot, like I use a hunting sled a lot, um, I want to be able to pull my sled out here and not be tripping over logs and all kinds of other stuff, right? So one of the things I'm doing, because this does grow up with a lot of natural underbrush and grass and things like that, um, neighbors' kids love to ride quads. So, you know, we're a couple months before hunting season. I'm having them come out and tear up the trails a little bit so they don't really grow back. Um, plus, I'm driving on the trails. But, you know, this trail here that I'm standing on right now was just cleared yesterday. 
Um, the growth was all this kind of stuff. Thorny, shrubbery and everything all the way through here. You could not walk through here and the deer didn't walk through here. And there was a couple logs on each end that was blocking this whole area off. So I just cleared it out yesterday. I don't know if you can see that. So that's just in the past 24 hours since I cleared it. Actually, I got done around three o'clock yesterday afternoon. It's around one o'clock in the afternoon today. So within 24 hours, the deer are passing through. Why? Because this, this is easy for them. It leads right to their water source. There's food sources here. Um, it's the path of least resistance. It's an egress point from where they come out of the field up there. And um, it's an entry point for the wooded area that they like to walk through. What's really nice is I've found those little uh, scat trails all through this trail, all the way out through, uh, right to about my camp, and then it cuts back up to the field again. Um, they're walking in circles here. The really nice thing is I came out this morning and I didn't disturb them. I didn't bother them. I backed off when I saw it. And this area back here, which originally was going to be a trail and I changed my mind, they were bedding down back in here, right in this area, back in here. There's about six of them bedding down in there. So I just back trace my steps very quietly and move my way back out of the woods. So they're already setting up shop. Okay. Now, since I'm keeping that in mind, here comes the reason why I camp out when I hunt. I camp out all the way out there. If I came into the wooded area here towards where I live, if I came in in this direction, I'd bump all those deer that are bedding down. But since I'm down there, and since they gradually move towards the field or towards water in the morning, guess what? I'm right, I'll be hunting where they're coming to instead of me chasing them away, okay? These are all things you have to consider. So, you know, going out at two o'clock in the afternoon the day before setting up camp, uh, having an early dinner, hitting the rack early, and getting up early, very quietly, um, I can get into my hunting location and I simply wait for them to come to me at that point. If I need to do any stalking, luckily, they're over here moving in that direction, I'm over there, and I'm going to slowly stalk around this area where I know they have those multiple points where they're going to go where their food's at or those multiple points where they're going to go and their water's at. Um, I'm making it easier for the animals to pass through and I'm making it easier for them to set up home here too. Okay. So a lot of people see the brush at the edge of their property and they don't do much about it except for just keep it cleared back a little bit. I want to see into the woods on the edge of my property. So I open up spots where I can see in um, shoulder, chest to, to head height, because that's where the deer usually are with me, chest to head height. If I can see them, guess what? They can see me. But if I'm from a distance and I can see them, even better, right? So I know to wait, be calm, especially when I'm ground hunting, I'm stalking with like a recurve bow or something like that. I'm gonna wait until they pass through a little bit and I'm gonna come in around them on one of those other trails, sneak in and around them and I'll have a good shot but I won't be trailing right behind them and I won't be right in front of them, okay? So hunting doesn't start with firearms, bows, traps, tools, any of that stuff. It starts with recognizing what needs to be done to the property that you're on or what to look for on the property you're on. All right, see you next time.